Hello and what's up to you all awesome and wonderful matriculants. This is your very first show of your PS. I know that you guys, you missed this. I also missed you guys and we're going to have fun. My name is Abram and today we're having a great show with John. John, how are you? I'm great. Hi guys. I hope you're doing well and uh, hope you're ready to get it stuck into some chemistry this evening because we're going to have a lot of fun. Trust me, John, already the mindsetters are ready for this. There are shout-outs on the page to me watching the show, saying they are ready to learn more with this. Guys, if you haven't got the notes that John is going to be telling us more about, make sure that you go to our Facebook page, which is facebook.com forward slash LearnExtra. Also follow us on Twitter at LearnExtra. All these notes, guys, are available on this workbook. It's available, and you can order it right now. Just send an email to sales at mindset.co.za. More details will be on this Facebook page. John, you can tell us more about this or some uh, workbook and the notes that we have. Yeah, for sure. Um, guys, we decided that instead of giving notes every week in a, a sort of random fashion that you've got to download, get your notes for the year. And then you can work through all the exercises for each section and there are even some preliminary exam type examples as well. So you can do complete revision with the workbook and even better news is that there are work solutions for every one of the sections. So each chapter has a content section in it with some worked examples, step by step, of what you need to do. And the second thing is then there's practice exercises. And you can work in the book, you keep it all together, no need to get another file or anything, just get the workbook. And then of course, if you've worked ahead and you've done the question, then you can ping AB up and say, listen, I didn't quite get the answer. I think this is a mistake here, or I'm not sure how we get this. Ask the question, and we'll try and answer those on our live shows coming up. So shall we get into yes, to John. today's lesson? Yes. Guys, today is all about organic chemistry. And, and I know that some of you will have started organic chemistry, and maybe some of you have finished organic chemistry uh, at the end of the first term. But we haven't had that opportunity. We've done some talking about the molecules and the different functional groups and the intermolecular forces. So let's kick this session off by talking about some of the reactions. Now, there are a whole lot of chemical reactions you need to know. But what I want to focus on is some of the new reactions that you must know and some of the new compounds that you must know about. And those are called polymers. Now, polymers are found all over the place in our everyday life, and we're going to be talking a little bit about them during this particular lesson. But let's get into it today and see exactly what we're going to find out. So in today's lesson, we're going to revise uh, different types of organic reactions, and we're going to look at polymers and the process of making polymers, which is polymerization. Now, you don't need to get uh, too excited here. Uh, it's really not difficult. Uh, yes, at university level, polymer chemistry is an amazing uh, field of study. And uh, it's got lots of stuff to it. It's, it's dynamic, it's interesting, and th there's a lot of learning to do. At school level in grade 12, there are really just a very small number of basic things that you need to know. But they're relevant, and we can look around our house and we'll find polymers all over the place. Even natural polymers, they exist. So we need to start thinking about this term polymer, and we'll come to it in a little while. I'm going to just do some brief revision. I'm not going to go through all of these sections, uh, but I'm just going to, these are the notes that are in the, the uh, workbook. Uh, I'm going to highlight some important chemical reactions that you definitely do need to know about. Um, and I'll say a few words about the more important ones. So the first one I'm going to talk about is this thing called combustion. Combustion? Well, what do you think it is? Combustion? Ah, that's right. It's when you burn something. We've talked about burning things right from grade 9. Uh, burning metals in oxygen. Well, here we're going to talk about burning organic compounds, and particularly the hydrocarbons. Now, Abi, I, I know that this is something that you might have seen and, in fact, might experience, particularly when we have that wonderful thing called load shedding. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're wanting to cook, 
Yes. What, do you, what do you bring out of the garage or out of the storeroom to be able to cook on? And just as I was saying that whole thing, we are about to experience something where we don't have electricity. Well, the, the answer I was looking for, uh, Amy, is we take gas, which is known as a hydrocarbon, and we burn it in oxygen. This is, this is what combustion is about. And I'm sure you've experienced yes, this. Yes. Um, you've had food cooked on a gas grill or on a gas brier. Um, so what are the products? Well, it's carbon dioxide and water. And that's quite amazing. And it's very interesting that we say that this is cleaner than making electricity. Because if we look at these, we'll recognize that carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas, and so is, high, uh, so is water. But guys, the amount of energy produced and the amount of efficiency in b using gas as a cooking uh, agent is much less than the pollutants that are produced when we go to a coal-burning power station, where they're not just releasing carbon dioxide and water, but they're um, releasing things like, although they try and limit it, but sulfur dioxide, oxides of nitrogen, and these all have an impact on the environment. So the tricky thing with these combustion reactions, it's often asked, is they ask these in the context of balancing equations and stoichiometric, uh, stoichiometric calculations. What do I mean by that? Was when they say, well, if I have five grams of butane and it burns completely in oxygen, how much carbon dioxide and water will I produce? And you've got to do mole calculations. So I'm just reminding you that this is an important reaction for that type of, uh, of uh, question that will come up. Now, the second type of reaction, which is also one of my favorites, is this one. It's called esterification. Now, for those of you that don't remember, let me say it again to you. Uh, an ester is a very fragrant molecule, and it has this sort of functional group. It has C, C, sorry, C, R, I've made a mistake, let me correct that. It doesn't have CC, it has CO, C, O. And what does that word spell for you if you go C, O, C, O? Well, Abram, help me. C, O, C, O. How would you say, what would you say with that? Cock. No. Co. Co. C, O, C, O. Oh, yeah. Okay. C, O, C, O. Coco. Now, guys, Coco is uh, an important word here because we can identify that functional group belonging to an ester. Now, Abram, you need some more education, so let me try and help you. Uh, I know that one of the things that the ladies out there like is perfume. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't know if you've got a young lady. Well, the, <laughs> he might need a couple of dates towards the end of the year. So uh, hit him up, message, inbox him, and see. Maybe, maybe um, he'll he'll uh, reply to your invitation. Um, but uh, perfume. Yes. What's the most famous brand of perfume that that you would like to give to a very special person? Uh, there's Esther. Esther. Uh, I think it's Esther Lord. Okay, there, that's one of the makers, but the famous, famous perfume. Uh, it's, there's something called, it's like Chanel number no. five. Now, I'm not advertising, but it was <laughs> made by somebody called Coco Chanel. Oh. Coco okay. Chanel. Now, guys, here's the way that you remember things. You start to think of a story. Did you see? Coco Perfume, esters are fragrant molecules. And how do we make esters? Well, that's very easy. They come from combining an alcohol and a carboxylic acid in the presence of a catalyst, which is a dehydrating agent, sulfuric acid, and it gives us an ester plus water. It's very similar to the acid plus base, which will give you a salt plus water. Here, alcohol plus carboxylic acid in the presence of the catalyst. If we don't have the catalyst, the reaction will still take place, but it takes place very slowly. Uh, we'll give you an ester plus water. 
Okay, I think I've said enough about those. Uh, I love esterification reactions. We're going to do some problems on those. The next type is substitution. Now, what do you think substitution means? Well, guys, uh, you just have to turn on the TV, uh, onto a, a sports program, and your favorite game, and you'll see somebody standing on the sideline, and they do something like this. Huh? Mm, Have you mm. seen that? Yes, sir. What, what does that mean? Exchange. A exchange. So the player that is on, whether it's number 9, is exchanged with number 13 or number 12. The one comes off the field, the one comes on. And this happens in exactly the same sort of way in a substitution reaction. So there are different types of substitution reactions. We can have an alkane that reacts with a halogen, and look what happens. The alkane is saturated. That means it has carbon to hydrogen bonds all around all the carbons. And what happens is the halogen, remember what the halogens are? Fluorine, bromine, chlorine, and iodine. Most reactive one is fluorine. The fluorine comes along and kicks out a hydrogen. And so what do we end up with? Remember, the halogens are diatomic. So we could have F2, Br, uh, Cl2, Br2, and I2. I won't go to the other one. And what happens is we get the halogen, which is diatomic, and one of the atoms gets attached to the alkane. So one of these gets knocked onto there, and a hydrogen gets kicked out and joins up with the other one, which we make a hydrogen halide. Okay. Now, we can also do alcohols and hydrogen halides. And they produce halo alkanes in water. Please take note. There are different types of alcohols. There are primary, secondary, and tertiary alcohols. The tertiary ones react the easiest. And so we generally talk about those in this reaction. And then I think this is the last substitution reaction, the halo alkane and a base. And the base is usually sodium uh, hydroxide or potassium hydroxide. And we take the halo alkane, we heat it up with um, one of the bases, and we let it brew for a bit. Um, if the base is dilute, uh, this reaction can happen at room temperature without heating up, and we get an alcohol and a hydrogen halide. Okay, there are your substitution reactions. Let's move on to the next ones. And these ones are absolutely critical. They're happening around us all the time, and they're called addition reactions. And the basic thing in a addition reaction, we take a double bond and we break it by adding another substance to it. So if that was ethene, the double bond, we come along and we add some hydrogen to it, and we take away the bond, we leave it with, just take away one of the bonds at least, and we now can put in an extra hydrogen. So I shouldn't have done it up there, let me put it down over here, put an extra hydrogen over there, extra hydrogen over there. Now you've got CH3 on that side, CH3 on that side, and we've broken the double bond. Talk about this as the London Bridge sort of experiment or, or reaction because there's a double bond and the bridge opens up. Still the pillars are connected, but the top part isn't connected and the boat can go through and uh, we can attach something to this side. Uh, we will talk more about those in particular context of um, polymers. Now, there's elimination as well where we take something off and we produce a double bond. So elimination and addition are opposites of each other. And I'm going to rush through to the next one because I see we're almost out of time um, for this segment. And we're going to talk a little bit about what are polymers. Polymers are very large molecules. They're called macromolecules. And they consist of units that are repeated. So they have a pattern. They're not all jumbled up. They're repeated. There's an order to them. And there are different types of, of polymers. Some are called plastics. And the example that I'm going to refer to, and the example that you must know really well, is something called addition polymerization of ethane. Now, uh, 
there is your, um, so this is important to recognize. Our monomer here is actually not ethane, but ethene. Okay, that's your starting point. And what we do is we break the double bond and we make something called polyethane. So be aware of that. We were going to do a question on that. But in each of these units, we break the double bond and they're able to join on to each other. So it's a bit like Lego blocks. They build on to each other. As the one bond breaks, the next one forms. And we're able to join these units, these individual units that aren't bonded together. Those are called, those are the starting blocks. They're called monomers. Okay, monomers. Uh, let's have a look at another example of a polymer. And this one is not a plastic. Monomer, I mean, polymers come in all shapes and sizes. This one's called a fiber. And the one you need to know here is polylactic acid. And I'm not going to say too much more about it, other than to say it's very much like the ester reaction. On the one side of the molecule, there is an alcohol end, and on the other side is the carboxylic acid end. When the alcohol end meets with the carboxylic acid, we form a long chain. And those repeat themselves to form this uh, polylactic acid. Um, so it's a very nice reaction, very useful. It's biodegradable as well. Just to mention in your notes, there are a whole lot of monomers and showing you the polymers that go with them. These units are just simply repeated. So please get the notes, have a look at them, and make sure that you understand the principle. You will never have to draw a polymer. You will never even have to draw many of the, mo uh, of the, the, the monomers. Just for an example here, this is styrene. Now, you probably have drunk out of a polystyrene cup. The one that you do need to know is the ethene and the polyethene. And that's what you get when you go shopping. You get a plastic bag that is a polyethene bag. Or a squeeze bottle that has tomato sauce or something in it, that's also polyethene. We could talk all day, but I think it's time for a break. It is indeed, John. Guys, thank you for your questions and your comments. Keep them coming because we're here to help you guys. And if you're struggling, we're here for you. It's all about chemistry today. See you after this break. Welcome back, guys. If you're late, just like the mindset on the page, boy, do me saying I'm late, but I'm glad that I'm watching this show. Make sure that you get your notes from our website, of course, learn.mindset.co.za. Guys, I must tell you that on that website, there's a schedule with all the shows, the notes, links, and some of the videos for the past shows. So, so make sure that you, you get to that link because it's very helpful, guys. Otherwise, ask me on Facebook and I'll tell you all about it. John? Thanks, Abby. Guys, I see that there's some questions on the page. Some of them are related to organic chemistry. Some of them are related to chemistry generally. It's great to interact with you. We'll see how many of those we can fit into our next segment. So please ask as many questions as you can. If you're not sure about something, now is the chance, and I'll see if I can help to answer that for you. Okay, let's pick up on some questions from previous exam papers. And this one is about the making of esters. And so I want you to see that it's, it's got a whole text region where it tells you many of the flavors and odors of fruits are esters. I like to underline keywords. Ethyl ethanoate is the most common ester found in wines and contributes to the perception of fruitiness of wines. So that's the odor, the, the bouquet they talk about uh, in uh, tasting wine. Ethyl ethanoate. A learner wants to prepare ethyl ethanoate in the school laboratory. She follows the instructions below. And so there are a list of instructions that I'm not really going to read other than to highlight. It tells you you're going to need ethanoic acid, one centimeter cubed, and ethanol, one centimeter cubed. Then you're going to add concentrated, concentrated sulfuric acid while swirling the test tube, and it gives you a whole lot more instructions about heating it. There's the diagram, and uh, it says that you can smell the vapor after a little while. 
Now, this ethyl ethanoate is not particularly flavorsome. It's not particularly, it's got an odor, but it's not particularly pleasant. But guys, there are an amazing range of, of different esters. Some of them smell like apricots, and some of them smell like uh, that uh, liniment, that wintergreen. That's one of my favorites uh, to make that. Um, I'll see if I can remember the, the exact formula for that. But this question now goes into, there's the apparatus, how we've done it. There's a thermometer, there's paper towels soaked in cold water, there's a water bath, that's where we've got the recipe, and there's the Bunsen burner underneath. That isn't very common, but that's the particular question that they've put together. So, first question, to which homologous series does ethanol belong? Now guys, when you get a question on the organic reactions, you can be asked all of the terminology about organic molecules. And this is an example. Remember what a homologous series is. It's the family. It's the things that behave the same and have got the same functional group. They've got similar chemical and physical properties. They have a general formula. They belong to the same family. And so when we look at the word eth and ol, the functional group that stands out is this one. And that's being the functional group we know that belongs to the homologous series that's called alcohol. Now, I don't want to rush on from there. I just want to remind you that most of the compounds that have this functional group in are extremely poisonous. And if you were to take any of this material and drink it, you could end up dying. It is not to be played with. There are cases written up every year where people play around with different types of alcohols, whether it's ethanol or whether it's methanol or it's a mixture of them or it's propanol or butanol. And people that don't know can actually do very serious damage to themselves. And guys, this just brings into another focus. When we're talking about these, ke these chemical molecules, we need to understand that they can be harmful to us. And not just at the, at the instant, but even if we've had some and we then go and drive. Not a good idea. So please respect alcohol. Respect and obey the laws relating to it. It's really not something that you need in your life. But if you have to, be very careful. Do not make a habit of it. Do not uh, become addicted because it is addictive. Okay, so next thing. Use structural formula to write a balanced equation for the reaction taking place in the test tube. So remember what we had. We had some ethanol and we had some ethanoic acid. So I'm going to draw these so that we can make them clear. So what does the word eth refer to, the prefix eth? Do you remember? Eth, ah, that's right, it's two carbons joined together. And the fact that there's an eth an means that there's a single bond between them. So we're going to start with the ethanoic acid. So I'm going to say ethanoic acid. I've got two carbons joined together. And on this side here, I'm going to put the carbonyl group. Carbonyl means carbon with a double bonded oxygen. And over here, I'm going to do the OH. That would be the functional group for the carboxylic acid. Have I finished? No. Please don't stop there. Let's check. Every carbon needs to have four bonds. So that's carbon bond number one. Carbon bond number two, number three, number four. So that carbon's fine. But this one doesn't have all its bonds. And I was asked to draw the structural formula, so I must put the hydrogen carbon to hydrogen bond in. Also notice that I've put a bond between the oxygen and the hydrogen over there. I'm just highlighting that because some people don't, and they may lose a mark for it. We don't want that to happen to you. The next thing we're going to do now is to put the alcohol in its place. So we got the structural formula of the, um, of the carboxylic acid. 
I'm now going to draw the alcohol. But what do I do? I'm going to draw it in a different color. I'm going to choose the blue. And I'm going to say, right, I need two carbons. Again, two carbons. And I'm going to put the hydrogens on this end. And I'm now going to put the oxygen and the hydrogen over here. And the hydrogens over there. That, check it out, is ethanol. How do I know? Well, look, one carbon, two carbons, and an ol as the functional group. Just take that away for a minute. There we've got it. Now, what's going to happen when we put these two together? Well, we need to recognize in the presence of concentrated sulfuric acid, something very interesting happens. We might have expected this hydrogen to disappear because as an acid, it would donate a hydrogen, but it doesn't. Okay? What actually happens is this whole thing here gets sucked off. And what have I got in that block there? I've got two hydrogens and one oxygen. And if I take two hydrogens and one oxygen, what substance can I form? Ah, oh, you've got it. I can form water. Now, if I was drawing this out uh, accurately, I would then redraw the product. I'm going to cheat a little bit because I'm running out of space. I'm going to take this away, and I'm going to uh, extend this blue line. And let's hope that we can just move it across. And let's see if we can do that. Let's see if we can pull it. There we go. Isn't that wonderful? Got it. And now I can show you that the substance that I've started with, uh, or I've ended with, is this ester. How do we name it? We name it from the alcohol side first. It's ethyl, and then we name the carboxylic acid. ethano 8 But I can't forget what else I've got. I've got water. Because they asked for the structural formula of water, I must draw it in like that. Because it's not a straight molecule, it's slightly bent. So that would be the product drawing the structural formula. Now, next question. What is the function of the sulfuric acid in the above reaction? Well, it's the dehydrating agent or the catalyst. Okay? Um, and it effectively just pulls that water off. Remember, I, I circled for you the two hydrogens and the oxygen, and that's what the, carbo uh, that's what the sulfuric concentrated sulfuric acid does. It pulls them off. Um, now, here are some experimental questions. Why does the method use a water bath instead of directly heating over the open flame? Let's go back to the picture so you can see exactly what's happening there. There's the open flame, but the test tube is... Uh, the, the substances are in water. And they're, they're in a test tube, in a beaker, in water. Now, why is that happening? Well, you need to understand that many of the organic molecules are flammable. So if we're burning stuff, and we've got a Bunsen burner, which is very hot, the whole thing could suddenly burst into flame. So we put them in water to keep the temperature controlled. So it doesn't heat rapidly, in one position, and it gives consistent warming. And generally, water baths don't even have an open flame. We might just use a kettle or something to put the water in, heat up the... I wouldn't use a Bunsen burner for this particular reaction. You could just simply heat up water in a kettle or put an element, like a, a, a heating element, into some water and take away the open flame. It's, it can work, but it's not as safe as it could be. And there's a second precaution which we're going to come to in the next question. And it says, state one function of the wet paper towel at the end of the test tube. Now, remember what I've said to you in the previous question. There's some wet paper towel over here. And the reason that it's there is because as you're heating, you're driving off some fumes. So the fumes are getting, getting pushed off. The ester fumes. Now, esters are flammable too. And if the ester pushes off like that and it, a it gets into the flame, the flame becomes bigger and the whole thing could be set on light. So what we do is instead of doing that, is we put the water, paper towel with water there, the ester dissolves into the water and it prevents 
the threat or the possibility of an exp uh, a, a flame um, getting out of control. Okay, maybe are there any questions about esters? Uh, not now, John. I'll give you. Okay, good. Let's move on. So, guys, the next question um, is a typical question that throws in all sorts of um, different types of reactions. Let's see how, how many of these we can get through so that we can identify them. And they typically give you a flow chart, as we've got down here, to say there's a couple of processes happening. So from A to B to C, what is happening and can you identify what's happening? So what do we see? Well, the first thing that I notice is the letters A to F in, uh, in the diagram represent types of organic reactions. So what have I got? Let me identify some of the things. The first thing, I, I'm going to start with A because that's a good point. I've got CH2, CH2. Well, I should be able to identify that. That's two carbons with a double bond in it. So two carbons immediately tells me that it's eth, and the double bond tells me that it's ethene. That's the hydrocarbon that I've got. Now, what about over here? Well, if you look at it, CH3, CH2OH, condensed formula, but I can pull it together and I can say, oh, that's not too difficult. It's eth as well, but now there's no double bond. It's uh, eth and ol, and the functional group is the OH, so that gives it to me there. Now, what about my next one? This one tells me I'm introducing something that's like that. So what have I got? I've got a carbonyl group and a hydroxyl group. What is that? Carbonyl group, double bonded oxygen, and an OH. Well, it's a carboxylic acid. And what it's telling me is ethanol is going to combine with this carbon carboxylic acid to give me that substance. So I've just done a process where I've combined a, an alcohol and a carboxylic acid and it produced an ester. So I can identify that this substance, must E, must be an ester. So what is it? Let's just do it now because it's most likely they're going to ask us just now to name it or to, to describe it in some way. F step number one, I've got the name of the alcohol. What about the name of the carboxylic acid? Well, let me count the number of carbons. I know that that's carbon number one, that's carbon number two, that's carbon number three, that's carbon number four, that's carbon number five. Now you might say, well, John, why did you start on that side? We normally read left to right. Why did you start on the right-hand side? Guys, the reason we start and we number carbons from the right-hand side in this case is we always start and make the lowest number uh, the, the functional group must be the lowest number. The functional group of the substance must try and be the, 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 uh, the lowest number, particularly for carboxylic acids. So um, in this case, we've got five carbons. So five is pent. So this is pent. They're all single bonds. So it's pent and oic acid. So here's my challenge to you. And I want you to think about it as we start to think this through, we go to the other questions that I've just looked at the information here. What would the name of the ester be? Can you think about it? Can you determine the name of the ester? Well, just jot it down quickly. We've given ethanol plus pentanoic acid. Write it down and we'll check it in a minute. Okay. So, here we go. Name the type of reactions, addition, substitution or elimination represented by B and F. So let's go and have a look at B and let's go and have a look at F. So B starts with the ethanol and it ends with the um, alkene. So what have we done? We've created a double bond. We started with uh, the uh, ethanol, the OH group. There must have been another product produced. Where is the OH gone? Normally when we have an alcohol and we form a double bond, we must add in water. So now watch here. 
We've got one substance to start with, and we've produced two. We've eliminated, we've pulled off the water. I, I want to just get some blank paper just to show that to you in a little bit more detail. So let me go over there. So here's where we started. We started with the alcohol. I'm going to draw it like that. And what I want you to see is that in this process, we've grouped these things together and we've pulled them off. We said, let's get rid of you. And a way of saying get rid of you or pulling you off is elimination. Because in this case, we got rid of them, but we didn't put anything else in its place. So now we've got these two single electrons in the bond, because the bonds are made up of a pair of electrons, and we've taken away the oxygen, we've taken away the hydrogen with its single, and they're sitting together happily joined with another hydrogen making water, but we've left with two. Can they stick around with a single electron here, single? No, they want to form a bond. They're sitting looking at each other, and they're saying, oh, can't we join together? That one is sitting there, that one is sitting there, and they're, they're, they're eager to join together. And so that's exactly what happens. So the next step in this process is instead of us just removing them and they're staying like that, they're unstable at this point. So what are they going to do? They're going to join together and we create a new bond. And we end up then with the double bonded ethene. Okay. And that's exactly what I was showing you uh, a little bit earlier. That's a, an example of elimination reaction. Um, what you need to understand is the opposite reaction would be addition. So, in our notes that we're going to say, this is elimination. Because we're getting rid of water and we're forming a double bond. For me, the easiest way to see this, I start with one thing and I go to two things. I've eliminated something. If it's the opposite, start with two things, go to one thing, it's addition. Okay, what about uh, process F? Process F, we've started with bromoethene and we've ended with alcohol. So bromoethene is a halo alkane and we've ended up with an alcohol. So we've changed bromo being in. We've said, bromo, your time is up. Blow the whistle on you. Come out, bromo. Let's put an OH in its place. And that's the process there. We call that substitution. All very straightforward and I hope you can see how we deduce that. Okay, both A and C represent addition reactions. Name the type of addition reactions represented by A and then by C. So let's have a look at A and we're seeing what is added. Remember we went from the, al the ethene to the alcohol, and I've made it easy for you, because what did we add? We added water. We added a hydrogen on the one side of the bond and an OH, hydroxyl on the other side, so we've hyd the process is known as hydration. It's addition, but it's specifically called hydration. And number C, let's have a look at C, we went from uh, the double bonded uh, ethanol and we ended up with bromoethane. So what have we done? We, it's noticed it's just bromoethane. So we can't say that it's two bromos. It's just one bromo at this stage. And the name should really be indicated for us. We could say, it wouldn't be incorrect to say one bromo, but we wouldn't say it's dibromo. It's definitely not dibromo. Otherwise, we'd have to say it, one, two dibromo. So we recognize that it must be the addition of hydrohalogenation. Halogenation. What is that saying? I'm adding, I'm using HBr to add to the ethene. Okay, guys, I am going to leave the next question for you to have a look at while we take a short break. Reaction A represents the conversion of an alkene to an alcohol. Apart from the alkene, another, reaction, uh, another reactant and a catalyst are re needed. Write those down. 
And then the last part of the reaction, no, that's it. Uh, have a look at it. And let's see how you manage. We'll be right back after AB's had a few words. Awesome. Guys, make sure that you send us your questions because after this, I'll be giving John some of your questions. Stay tuned. Welcome back, guys. Now, to tell you about this other exciting competition that we have, it's called the Beer Bright Spark Competition. All you need to do, guys, is to look at our Facebook page, which is facebook.com forward slash learn extra. We've got simple instructions for you to stand a chance of winning a cool Chevy Spark L. All you need to do is to buy, is to buy the Safeways K53 book or download the cool Android app, which is available, guys, for 59 Rand. More details are on Facebook. John, I've got some questions and comments from the Mindsetters. Absolutely. Let's go for them. All right, uh, still saying thanks a lot, guys, for the great show. Lungi uh, Swa, Angel Rasmi, hala, guys, great show. He has a question now from from Shamina. Shamina says, doesn't eth ethyl ethanoid have two carbon atoms? Okay, let's take that one step at a time. Let's decode that name. So, was it Shamira? Uh, sh Shamima. Shamina. Shamina. Have a look. We're going to say ethyl ethanoate. Now, what you've got to recognize is that there are two parts to this molecule. You recognize it's an ester, what we've done earlier. This part comes from the alcohol. So that part comes from the alcohol. And this part comes from the carboxylic acid. And so, <coughs> both of these have S in them. That means that there were two carbons in the alcohol and there were two carbons in the carboxylic acid. When you join these two together, then you get four carbons and the famous Coco Chanel bond. And that's what makes it an ester. So, no, it's not two carbons. Each branch, each part, on the other side of this carbon to carbon, carbon to oxygen to carbon bond, there are two carbons in both sides. <coughs> so, just be aware of that. The ethyl refers to the one part, and that eth refers to the other part. So, eth, eth means that they're four. All right, yeah. more questions, John? Go for it. All right, here's one from Boitumelo Mpali. I'm sorry, uh, she just corrected me. She's Boitumelo, the president. So, uh, okay. Boitumelo, the president, says on number 2.1.2, .2, why isn't it hydrohalination as water is added and the bromine bonds with one hydrogen and the OH bonds to the ethane? Okay, so uh, let's go. Was it two point? 2.1.2. 2.1.2. They asked for me whether it was, and this is very important. Madam President, please pay attention. You've got to read the question. Okay? Please take note. Uh, it said, name the type of reaction, and they've told you what you must do. You must name addition, substitution, or elimination. It's very, very important that you read what's written down in front of you. Okay, so I can't come up with anything else. I've got to say, is it addition, substitution, or elimination? And so that's why I've written substitution. You're absolutely right, because if we were to describe it more fully, like we've done A and C here, we've indicated what it would be. So if we had to look at the detail of reaction F, we're recognizing that it is not just an ordinary substitution, but it's substituting, um, it's substitute, if we're going from, from here to there, then what are we doing? We are substituting uh, the alcohol in. So we, 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 we need to recognize that there's a halogen coming out and a, hydrogen, uh, a hydroxyl going in. So I hope that makes it clear. Um, we generally, 
would be sufficient just to say substitution. And as Ashraf would say, RTFQ, make sure yeah. that you read the full question. Yeah, before. we know that you need to read the full question. Of and course. make sure when it says name that you name. And when it says give a formula, you give a formula. When it says write down the structural formula, you don't just write down the name or you don't give a condensed formula. Structural formula needs to show all the, uh, the, the bonds. Okay. All right. I think if we have time, we'll, we need to explain more about polymers again because some mindset is still. Um, okay, we'll get there. That. Another question, John. Um, Francina says, How is ethanol poisonous and why do we use it to make beers and, uh, and wines? It is a poison. If you have too much of it, you will die. Uh, it will cause blindness, brain damage, kidney de failure, uh, heart disease. Um, the fact that you dilute it with water just means that you're taking longer to have that same effect. And the body is amazing as well in that it starts to recover some of the damage that you've caused. So that's why I'm totally against underage drinking. And if it was up to me, I would ban the use of alcohol overall. Um, but I'll be tolerant and I'll like, respect your right to indulge if you're over 18. But while you're growing up, guys, it can, it's just going to lead you down the wrong way. But that's my personal opinion. All okay. right. Clear. Makes sense. Yes, John. Okay, cool. Uh, so let's go to this one. This was an addition reaction and we wanted to know what the other reactant was. Well, if we looked at it carefully, I'd already given it to you. I'd said to you reaction A, there it is. It's water plus ethene. So now, so the reactant is water. And the catalyst here, in organic chemistry, the most common catalyst that we use is sulfuric acid. And in this case, it's no, no different. So we use sulfuric acid. But you could have said phosphoric acid. So it would work with phosphoric acid as well. Sulfuric or phosphoric acid. Um, it does need to be concentrated sulfuric, and it helps with that breaking of the bond. Okay. Now, I want to skip through this one quite quickly uh, because I don't think that's terribly challenging, so I'm going to leave you to look for the answer in the notes. I want to try and answer some polymer questions and very quickly answer 2.5 as well. So, because I've given you this to do for yourself, reaction D represents the conversion of alcohol to compound E. Remember, we've identified as esterification. Esterification. And the next one, the formula of the catalyst, notice it, formula. So, it's H2SO4. And the, last, the next question, the structural formula of compound E. Now, remember what we said on the previous slide when we had it over here. We've got pentanoic acid and we've got ethanol. So I'm going to give the name first of all because that will help me. This is not because I'm answering the question. This is because I want to do the name because then I can check it. So I started with ethanol. So I'm going to say ethyl because that's from the ethanol. And I'm going to say it was propanoic acid. So it's prop and eight. Now, it's easy for me to draw that, and I hope you can do it as well. Let me go through it very quickly. I might not get time to do all the, the uh, carbons, I mean all the hydrogen bonds, and so I start with the alcohol, ethyl, two, two carbons. Now I'm going to do, uh, sorry, it wasn't propanoate, it was five. So that was, I uh, uh, made a mistake, I'm really sorry about that. So it was pent and O8. I just realized I'd done it wrong. Pent and O8. So I need five carbons here. One, two, three, four, five. I'm going to put the hydrogens in over there like that. Please fill them in. Don't leave them like this. Uh, I'm going to borrow a phrase that I'm allowed to do shorthand, and, but you need to fill in everything. I won't do that. I'll try and fill it all in. And make sure every carbon has four bonds. So check it. Four bonds over there. Four bonds over there. Yes. One, two, three, four. I've got four bonds. There, I've got it. So there's the structural formula. There's the name uh, ethyl pentanoate. Apart from the alcohol, write down the name 
of a reactant needed for reaction B to take place. Uh, and so let's go to the, to the sheet where we can see reaction B. And reaction B is that one, which is again going to be the sulfuric acid. Uh, it, you, you're going to need to dehydrate that substance. Okay, let's skip on and let's have a quick look. I think we've got a few seconds uh, of time to look at the polymerization of ethene. Okay? Uh, the polymerization of ethene to produce polyethene is represented as follows. So this tells me I've got n number, magic number, 100, 200, 2000 of these things. And what I'm, I'm going to do is I'm going to form this polymer. So the first thing that they ask us in this question is define macromolecule. Guys, this is in the notes. Basically what they're wanting, it's a very large molecule, large molecule that's got a repeating pattern. And you need to write in full sentences, but those are the key ideas. Repeating units or pattern in it. Classify this type of polymerization. And clearly, we went from a, a double bond to a single bond, so it's an example of an addition polymerization. Remember what's happening here. We're taking a unit, and perhaps we can just slow down and just cover this thoroughly we'll be while we do the two industrial things. We just say that's a plastic sheeting, plastic bags, and uh, bottles. We can use the squeeze bottles as examples, but now that I've answered those two, let's just slow down and let's illustrate for you quite nicely how po a polymerization works. So I'm going to take my one ethene molecule over here and I'm going to take another one. Now remember there are m literally millions of these in this sort of reaction. Oh, oh, not a double bond there. but Let's put it in. Single bond, single bond, double over here, single over here, and there we go. Now, when you collide these two together, under heat, under conditions where it's, it's favorable, what's going to happen is this double bond breaks. So I'm going to take my eraser, and I'm going to put half of that double bond over there, and the other half over there. And in the same way, I'm going to take my eraser, and I'm going to put the one half of the double bond over there, and the one half of the double bond over there. Now, the stick's sticking out like that, or on the side like that, they're going to straighten up and they're going to form a bond that allows me to join those two. And can you see? It's repeated and the next block can fit in. And so we can repeat this pattern over and over again. Maybe I hope that, do you follow that? Yes. Can you see how the blocks fit together? Mm. And that's why we call it addition polymerization. We're breaking the bond and we're joining the things together. Any questions? Uh, there was a question about what is a catalyst. Okay, uh, let me explain what a catalyst is. A catalyst, like sulfuric acid, is a chemical substance that speeds up the reaction. If you go to uh, remember stuff that you've done in grade 11, where we did rate, gr uh, we, we did energy profiles, we said that these are the reactants. I'm just going to put R there, and P are the products. It takes a certain amount of energy to get up the energy hill, and then energy is released. This is an exothermic reaction. When we have a catalyst, it lowers the amount of energy, and in that way it speeds up the reaction. So there's less en activation energy. That's the root of the catalyst. The catalyst itself is not used up. It doesn't change. All right, quick, Abby, one quick, more. Quickly, what is the difference between elimination and cracking? Okay, uh, elimination and cracking is the same thing. You can, you're uh, just breaking things apart. Uh, we're eliminating molecules from there. Remember the rule? If we have one thing and we break it into more, elimination. There's no difference then. Okay, Thank it's you just so a much. specific example of elimination, cracking. All okay. right. Thank you so much, John. Thank you guys for watching. That's all we had time for. Remember, we've got exciting competitions for you, so do check them out on our Facebook page. From us to you guys, we just want to say we love you and... Peace. Till next time.